Hello everyone! Good news! I remembered to actually take measurements before the stream, which means I can make progress towards getting this custom fit in exactly the size that I need. So, I'm going to start with that, and then we're going to move to painting some rocks. Also, I'm now realizing I need a place to plug this in. I did some studio rearranging yesterday. Last week, I finished painting my garage. Well, not the door, because that door is being replaced. You can literally like see the outside through cracks in it. Uh, but the rest of my garage is a beautiful black void. It's wonderful. Love it. Even the door is black. Look at that beautiful black door. Uh, so I also tried to manage some of my equipment up there. Um, it's still not pretty yet. We'll get it there. We'll get it there. But it's more out of the way. But it also means, oh yeah, all the uh, various plugs that I had <laughs> arranged are now different places. Naturally, I thought I had everything set up for today. I was close to having everything set up for today. But you know how that goes. So first things first, I'm going to be chopping this down quite a bit. And by this, I mean that thing you couldn't see because it was off frame. That's the thing. That's the one. Concerned that I might not actually be able to chop it down. I may have to do some more intrusive surgery. Because yeah, this is already pretty darn thin right there. I can't I can't just cut it off, it's gonna end up with a hole in it. So one thing I know is that most of this area is blocked off. You're just gonna see a little bit of section here behind my kind of couch cushion, grassy knoll thing. Um, mm, trying to think if that helps inform where I want to do this. Because I could cut the whole thing just like, like that twice and then just like put it back together. Um, if I do it right in the middle, you know, I have to fill a little bit of gap, but it's fine to do that, I would think. Um, let me flip it this way. Does that make anything better? No, it does not. Okay. This is not even going to. Well, I guess I could get it about that far through. Trying to decide if I want to do it with a hot wire cutter or a knife. I'm going to start with a knife and see if that works. Just double checking to see if there's any sort of beautiful features that I don't want to wreck. Not wrecking features in general is a good thing. Actually, you know what? You know what? It's going to work really well right here. It's my massive hot wire cutter. Just needs 
tighten down. I thought that this wire broke, but that must have been on my smaller Proxon. Uh, I have to remember how to actually tighten it. I think I, on this wheel here. Yeah. Stay taut. There's a little, um, what's that kind of spring called? There's a word for that kind of spring that, like, after you tense it up, it like, stays tense in theory. So, like, as I rotate it, ideally it stays, it doesn't roll back like that, right? And maybe it just has, like, a certain tightness threshold after which point it's always going to fall back. Um, in this case, it's not super important to have like a absolutely perfect line, so I'm not too worried about it. But. my dad grew up in the Midwest. Anyone else say ope when uh, when they've made a mistake instead of oops? of an inch 
which for those of you in Europe equals some amount of centimeters. Shorter cave accomplished. Kind of thinking now that I've done that, I might want to uh, go in and um, break out some more of the floor here so that maybe some of the ceiling here so that I'm not uh, overly limiting what kind of art I can put in there. interesting which is a little bit painful but on the other hand it's also so buried behind things and plus the emphasis is supposed to be on the sculpture sitting there not the terrain Thank mm -hmm. you. 
attach a lightweight speckling to um, fill in my new gaps. I tried to fit it into the little wall slash shelf thing. Um, these, uh, what are these called? Brackets? I guess they're L brackets. Um, it was too big, would not fit. And I think I wanted, let's see, to err on the side of moving the top one down. because it would be easier to have um, this top edge here go over the edge of my shell uh, than it would be to have it fall short and then there's gonna be like some kind of gap that I need to fill. It's easier to just cut away stuff than it is to fill in. Shortening this is also going to lead to another second order problem. But no, actually, that's not too bad. I was expecting there to be more of a gap in the top there, but there's. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's fine. Yeah, and I'll need it to fill a little gap right in there. That's pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah, you know what probably the best thing to do at this point 
the egg, glue this together, then spot glue it to here, then do a quick sanity check, just run upstairs, put it in the al little alcove, and at that point I know I'm free to just like go to town, cement these things really in place. I wouldn't be able to reclaim these, but I can indeed reclaim. It's the rightful heir and ruler of the throne of these bell brackets. I assert my authority and take them back. I've taken back what's mine. size test is that this section here which by the way I think is the most beautiful rock surface I've carved so far I'm really happy with this one uh, so naturally this is the part that needs to be disposed of because there's another little alcove in the half wall
the important thing isn't this particular piece. The important thing is that I think I remember how I achieved it so that I can do more of it. You made it. Welcome home. You put out the um, the large um, thingy. Oh, he's out. Okay. So it was actually taken today. Oh. They don't have. Brought home the bacon. Yeah, brought home the bacon. The bacon. My hardworking son brought for me, you guys. Uh, today was awful. It was just a constant rush, and since there's only two of us, there was like, and we have to deal with DoorDash, Uber Eats. Which we can't even see freaking DoorDash orders, so they just come, just come in. Come out of nowhere. These, these people who hardly speak any English. Mm -hmm. and they're like here, and I'm like, I don't know what you you, you need. Can you show me on the phone? I'm like what? What? And that, well, meanwhile, all chaos is breaking loose. You're earning those big tips. Oh no, we probably didn't earn any because um. DoorDash doesn't. Oh yeah, that too. But also. Uh, well, you can tip the driver. Right. Sits on his ass and drives around all day. You know, <laughs> not not us, the ones that are actually dying in here. Understaffed as heck. Um, uh, I, I said the F word three times on accident. I meant that. Oh. I, I said it once and I caught myself saying it. But I didn't realize after that I said it two more times. Because hot water, like for some reason the spigot got stuck on a piece of thing. So it was just pouring hot water while I was talking to this Asian woman. So I was like, I just shouted fuck three times. <laughs> and apparently she looked very offended. So professional. I mean, like, it was, it was like we're understaffed as heck, you know? Like, I think it was fine. It's fair. My reaction was fine. I was, Probably I was literally fired. getting burning water spilling on my back. So oh, is that, it was actually like burning you? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would say special exemption for when you're actually getting physically burned. It's like I get fired for <laughs> getting like punched in the face for saying yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to take it. <laughs> well, thank you for the donut. This donut shop he works at, he can get, he could bring home like 50 or 100 donuts a day that they otherwise end up throwing out. It's just like, oh, that is so disturbing. They have programs, you know, where some of it gets donated to certain places, but, you know, for health regulation reasons, the vast majority of the overstock has to, like has to be thrown away, <laughs> so or you know employee takes it home at the end of the day. Which at least they've got that. I'm, when I worked at McDonald's and Jack in the Box, I was constantly, essentially stealing from the dumpster. Not actually because you know I could I could just um, where am I? Here I am. I could actually just not throw it in the dumpster. Right. My job was to take all the food out. Uh, but I saved it for my tummy. And if you want to get um, uh, gain a lot of weight, that's a good way to do it. Let me tell you. So fortunately, Shane does not bring home all the donuts that he could. Otherwise, I'd probably be in big trouble. I cannot control myself around sweets in general. Turn into the cookie monster.
That's what I figured out in, I think it was my late 30s. I finally figured it out. Oh, the secret to not eating bad food all the time is to literally not have bad food around you ever. You don't exercise impulse control in the moment. You gotta, you gotta do the impulse control at the store. And there are strategies for that around like, you know, I'm not allowed to go shopping if I'm if I haven't just eaten. <laughs> Cause otherwise I make worse decisions. And I've been a lot more lax on those rules recently and my tummy tum has showed it. So if you recall last time I was talking about how you can do an intermediate paint of, paint of coat. A paint of coat you can put on here um, that allows you to more easily carve away the flappy doodles and it keeps a sharper, more rock-like edge when you do it that way. So it's not even a base coat per se. It's more like a, hmm, maybe a primer coat would be a way of thinking of it. You know, it's just latex, house paint. Um, I think with a little Mod Podge mixed in. But that's not necessary. It doesn't make much of a difference at this point. The point is to just get a uniform color over everything and a little bit of a shell. And that shell makes it so that further carving you do is a little more realistic. Because you're not tearing the foam as much. That is pretty much like cutting foam almost any way you cut foam because of its you know chemical structure lattice nature whatever it is about it it will almost always fracture like a kind of stone but tearing it that's where it starts losing that um, that nice stony nature where you end up with like in this case I've got these little little blobs right where it's like that little thing hanging out there that is just not what rocks look like you know and so I try to get rid of that kind of stuff if a rock is uh, cracking and flaking gravity is gonna make these little pieces fall off and down not just kind of float there half sticking out of course, exceptions to all rules do exist, but in general, it's just gonna be less realistic looking the more of those sort of <laughs> exceptions to the rule that do exist sometimes uh, you have in your art. Kind of like when you're making a map and you have your river split. It's like, yeah, there are a handful of those instances that kind of happen in the real world, mostly at uh, river mouths, but also, and there's river braiding, which legitimately happens, but in general, it's just going to make your maps look wrong, regardless of the fact that there are exceptions that exist in the real world. There are also certain sections of the grocery store that I just try to avoid. <laughs> I kind of think of it like, um, you know how there's, how in science fiction, spaceships always have this shield, right? And, and the shield has a percentage. Uh, we're down to 30% of our shields. That's the way I am with self-control. And I, cause I learned this um, at ArenaNet, they had free, everything all the time and almost all of the free stuff was just absolutely terrible for you it was like straight up candy sugary cereal granola um, 
you know, the closest thing to like real food they had would be like dried fruit and stuff, but that usually has so much sugar in it. Even if it doesn't have sugar added, fruit in general, boy, I just think it's so sad that people assume that because it's fruit, it's healthy and you can eat all you want. It's still mostly sugar. It's not refined sugar, so it's not as bad as a candy bar, but it's also not great for you. You should not be eating five pieces of fruit a day unless you're like constantly working out or your job is super physical. Anyway, uh, yeah, so all the stuff they had was very unhealthy. And I started just looking at it that way, like I'm, I'm a Star Trek ship cruising by this minefield and every time I walk by it and I see it with my eyes, that impulse, that shield impulse is worn down a little bit more. And there's only so much I can take. And also it varies by day, right? Like depending on how frequently I've had good food before, you know, when I worked out or not, what I'd eaten previously, all these things factor into how much uh, shield energy your, uh, your shield has and I can only reroute from the deflector dish so much before I, I end up caving especially on donut days oh my god donuts just the best thing ever donuts and cookies those are the two that get me every time my son to do is if he ever does bring home donuts just bring home one donut you know one for him one for me that's no more no more though cakes and flaky pastries yeah those are pretty close as well if it's a moist cake I don't, you know just like birthday cake or I don't know most cake is not as exciting to me Man, a super moist chocolate cake with really like fudgy kind of icing. Not not that like canned sugary icing, but but that fudgy thick, like almost tar-like substance. I don't I don't know how that's different, but however that's different. Oh my god, it might have maybe a lot of uh, heavy cream in it or something. I don't know. That stuff. Ooh. That's as good as a donut right there. Okay, I, I realize I'm getting sidetracked by this. I can sit here and pick away at details on this all day, but the important thing at this point is to make sure we've got all the pro uh, pro proportions. That'll always trip me up two sounds in the same word that sound the same? That's too hard to say, says my brain. Um, right, I wanna make sure the proportions are correct so that I can start the next sort of coat and I wanna start painting some of these things too. So, uh, to get to that point, I need to... Okay, okay let's get in firm. Probably the best way to do this is to actually hit it with a couple drops of glue, maybe just two to keep it roughly in place.
Red velvet and cream cheese icing. Mmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. I remember I looked up what red velvet is. Isn't it pretty much just cream cheese with red food coloring? Mixed into the cake batter? Something like that. I can't now I can't remember. It's like chocolate mixed with cream cheese. Chocolate maybe? And a lot of red food coloring. Necessary to take a couple minutes to get this test fit upstairs. I will BRB.
test successful, it's pretty much dialed in at this point. Um, I did pop it off to get it exactly where I want, but I drew some lines on there to help. And having it apart is gonna be, make it much easier to uh, clean up the seams inside there now. Vinegar and buttermilk. Vinegar? That does not sound like an appetizing addition to a sweetie treaty. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, if it has, uh, Vinegar in it, it's healthy. Okay. That sounds right. So I have no idea what buttermilk is. I shouldn't say I have no idea. I have little idea what buttermilk is. I assume it's one of those stages that milk goes through between, you know, the raw milk that comes out of the udder and then it gets uh, put through the process where it's stratified, right? Where they pull the heavy cream off or the skim off the top and then the curds somewhere along the way or may I, I don't know. I'm not a cow scientist. I don't know these things. butter you get solid stuff well, semi-solid and then the stuff that's not that <laughs> is buttermilk that makes makes good sense to me in the immortal words of julius caesar 
I'd buy that for a dollar. Pig, that will do. Where did I hide my gloves game? Where did Josh hide his gloves? Ha! Can't fool me, Josh. Done. of Elmer Fudd, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, you, you, you can't fool me twice, that one goes out to all my Elmer Fudd fans in Texas. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit of my Mod Podge here. enough so that when I mix the white into it, it'll make a nice gray mush. All I need is a mush. This will add some body to it. Oh, are we about to play Where Did Josh Hide the Stir Sticks game now? Oh, sorry, I found him. Do not get to play. Go. It's kind of a nice buttermilk consistency. I assume. I've probably never seen buttermilk in real life. This is lightweight spackling made for um, doing your drywall. I 
actually this stuff is thin enough that I can kind of brush it on which will be easier than trying to dab it with this thing. Dang, dab it! Should have taken that opportunity to try to convince you that it's actually the white stuff from Oreos. I think Weird Al did a song about that, didn't he? The white stuff. Uh, 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 Oreo. What's in the middle of an Oreo? The white stuff. Obviously, depending on the proportion that you mix this stuff, you can get a better or worse filling agent. I kind of have it on the more painty, squishy side than the filling, uh, seam gap filling side. Uh, but given that the seams were not particularly egregious to begin with, I think it's uh, working just fine. And also the fact that we already have sort of a, a striated um, rock bed look. 
totally fine for our purposes. So I was thinking of having a light up element in here could be pretty cool um, and it also occurs to me that having it down here which is where you probably won't see the source of the light uh, means that I don't have to worry about like actually making a whole you know torch or whatever sort of looking thing I got some LEDs from um, oh, who's this guy there's there's a guy that's making like custom electronic kits specifically for tabletop and wargaming, um, which is great because I am terrible at electronics. I don't want to learn them. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to buy a thing and stick it on my art. I don't want to mess around with Arduino or art. What is that called? Is it Arduino? Arduino? Whatever, you know, the whole like semi-programming thing to script your lights to do particular things. Just want to buy it. Just want to buy the lights. Ready to go. Anyway, um, yeah, it occurs to me I could very easily sort of run. Actually, come to think of it, I could literally put a T light here, but I also want the ability to have it easily turn on and off, and I don't want to have to, like, every time I stream, go in and, like, <laughs> reach around there and pull the thing out and flip on the switch and then put it back. That's just not practical. If I have to do that, I'll never do it. So I need something that can be plugged into the wall that I can attach a switch to. That's really what it comes down to. So I guess actually just leaving a little gap right here would make sense because I could run a wire from wherever behind it up through here and just have a LED something casting a little light there. Yeah. And there's plenty of room for it as it is. So I don't even need to worry about uh, cutting holes or anything at this point. yet because I want to glue this into place. sculptures and stuff on there and I would like them to not um, wreck the, the paint so I'm going to use my Mod Podge more on this bottom part and just put it on pretty darn thick
ready to sit and drive now. Before I spent a lot of time refining this edge, I needed to make sure that it was actually going to fit on the uh, little wall shelf thing, and it did, so don't need to spend much time on it. Uh, just enough to make it not look like super terrible behind my couch. Flappy bit down. Keeps wanting to let its freak flag fly, but that is not allowed on this edge. Normally I'm all for it, but this edge is just gonna break off if it's flapping all over the place.
brushing on these guys. So the rock forms we were working on last week, they just have a, again, base coat of Mod Podge. I think I do need to do a little bit of excising flappy doodles before I do this coat. means rotating it around and trying to see at every angle like am I seeing any like weird bits flip okay so can you see that one uh, let's see having the black splatty background doesn't help let's see if we can see that right there that is a flappy doodle and because it had the Mod Podge, I'm able to just like boop, pop it right off. Super easy. No tearing. And there's a certain size threshold over which tearing is almost inevitable, but a lot of these little ones will just slice right off now. thing I'm kind of looking for is bumps that stick out from the rock. They kind of look like pimples. Uh, that's another thing you hardly ever see in nature. If you look at boulders and rock faces, you'll see lots of chips and indents. You'll very rarely see a bump that just like comes off of the surface. Sometimes there's rock that's like, it feels like, it, or seems like it's pimply or bumpy all over it, right? And that's different than something that's like this sheared face, but then there's like, boop, a little, you know, boil sticking off of it. That's a thing you barely ever see. A lot of people just default to thinking that a rock texture or surface is bumpy and um, especially at with scale like terrain and diorama and stuff the scale that they end up with is almost always like just ridiculously out of scale and that's one of the things that kind of um, defeats the realism if that's what they were going for same with coloring rocks a lot of people will speckle them like a robin egg speckle all over. Again, that's something that some rocks have, but again, at the um, scale that you're going for, you're probably not gonna see a regular color pattern distribution that is the scale you get from just like spattering or using those uh, godforsaken uh, rock in a can spray paints <laughs> where it just like <laughs> spatters out. Uh, darker or lighter speckles over it. It 
also feel if there's little flappy doodles just by running your finger over it and anywhere your finger catches you know that's a place you might want to run your blade over bumps up here. I don't know. I'm guessing that was bubbles? It's weird. You know, on a surface that you know is going to be gravity is going this way, little bumps on top, not that big a deal. They just read like pebbles or gravel. Uh, totally different than being on the side of a thing. Perfect example of a pimple. See how it's got this little highlight on it. Catches the light coming down and it's just like boop. And my answer to that is no. No. Go away. I'm trying to remember what I actually used on this. It, I thought it was the Mod Podge, but I've never seen it bubble like this before. having the option to use this um, like this or like this you know I'm being able to stack stuff on it like so now this surface has a lot of very heavy brush strokes on it um, and so I'm just gonna do a I'm gonna dab it Lots of dabbing. I could mix in some more spackling if needed to make sure it's got enough texture to hide the brush strokes, but we'll see. I can also ameliorate them to some degree just by adding other sort of surface noise <laughs> on top, chips and things and stuff. It is how you hide a lot of problems, specifically seen, uh, seams between props in video game editors, so putting little pebbles or grass or, you know, wood, debris, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, percent gray. I'm going to go ahead and do a, um, I forgot, I came up with a word, oh, sludge coat. I'm going to do a sludge coat over this, meaning that I'm going to cover almost all of the black. Uh, I'm even going to be dabbing it into the cracks and stuff um, because I'm going to want to come back with a wash later. The black is there mostly just to provide a sort of final, uh, uh, what would the word be, um, protection against seeing the foam underneath, just in case. But I'm not looking to actually have like literally a ton of black in there. So. This is 
plenty dark. <laughs> you can hardly tell the difference between this and the black, but um, there is definitely some difference. And it looks like we're coming up uh, our half hour. Quindy, were you the one who helped um, formalize the sludge coat moniker? So let's start looking for our person to raid. And I will just paint this out with the reminder that I've got a YouTube channel full of videos about doing this kind of art and other kinds of art. I do album covers, I do sculpting. printing what else do I do I don't know there's other things I do too anyway yeah search for Josh Foreman on YouTube you'll have a good time I semi guarantee it and with that I bid you adieu I will paint you guys out have a good one